So, ladies and gents, uh, hello from uh, 737 Aviation, welcome to the channel. Uh, today, something a bit uh, different, as you see, that's a Honda Jet. Uh, so, this one is still work in progress, and that's a completely new add on coming soon to the Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020. So, uh, a bit about me, if uh, we haven't met before, so in real life I'm a pilot as well, I have about 5000 hours in total, including like 4000 on 737s and a couple hundred hours on the Honda Jet, which is one of the reason I got this one for testing. Uh, today we're flying from Geneva to Dubrovnik, which is quite, uh, let's say, popular route uh, in business jets, and we'll be reviewing this product. Uh, we have to keep in mind that this one is still work in progress, it's not really officially released, it's like pre-alpha testing, but uh, uh, we'll walk you through that one as we fly along. So, this one, as far as I know, it's the first uh, business jet, uh, the new business jet coming to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, except the CJ4 uh, by working title, which is actually a uh, modified default uh, airplane. So, this one was made uh, from scratch by the author, by the developer, as far as I know, it's one guy, but I'm not uh, really sure about that one. Uh, so, from outside, of course, it looks quite amazing, as you see. Uh, this one is Jetted Livery. Uh, Jetted is a company in the United States that is like... Uh, you can share the airplane, so you buy a shares in different planes, and they have a fleet of couple of Hondas, I think seven or eight of them. So uh, that's quite popular livery in states, at least. The airplane outside is really nicely modeled, as you see. Uh, it has all the doors opened, uh, like working. So the forward baggage, aft baggage. Uh, this one, in real life, is really big one, you can fit like four or five bodies inside. It doesn't look like, but it's a really big one, because of the engines are mounted on the pylons, instead of the fuselage, so uh, the aft cargo is a really big one. Uh, but uh, as soon as it's released, you can go to the exterior and watch everything yourself, but as you see it's really nicely modeled. Uh, it's missing just pieces, the small pieces on the engines, like it has little outlets or something, but it's not really a big issue. And it probably will be freeware on the beginning, but I'm not sure about that one, so uh, don't keep that in mind. Uh, and yeah, somebody made a lot of effort on this airplane, at least on the modeling. Come on, get out from here. Uh, so, once we get inside, uh, the flight deck is looking uh, quite realistic, as you see. Uh, the Honda Jet fly deck is really a small one. Uh, it's not the biggest airplane inside I flew, so... Uh, and the first thing you will notice, it's like it doesn't have too many switches. So it has a couple of buttons here, and just a couple of buttons here, and that's it. And of course autopilot, but otherwise it's not like a 737 or Challenger or something, which has switches all over the place. Uh, this one has just switches on the center pedestal and some switches behind the yoke okay i have this one problem with mfs that my mouse is hiding somewhere but we are back so uh basically the honda jet is like a flying playstation 
So everything in this airplane, of course, is American made. So it has to be some kind of, you know, forward, future looking, etc., etc. So they made everything automatic, like uh, hydraulics, pressurization, lights, uh, interior lights, exterior lights. You don't have any uh, authority on that. I mean, the lights you can change, but hydraulic system is just there. You cannot switch it off or on. Uh, same with pneumatics. So the pressurization, you don't set anything. You can just set the landing altitude and that's it. So they made that uh, really, really automatic plane. It's certified to be flown by one pilot, uh, which is complete enough. So, and yeah, no many, not many switches. And these avionics are Garmin 3000 and uh, Honda Jet is running uh, this working title Garmin 3000 with some minor changes so it still needs quite a lot of work but uh, system test okay it is uh, looking like on the jet interior already but it's still default one with some changes uh, but it's completely fine to fly that uh, if you haven't flown a real one uh, you won't probably notice too many difference so once you start the airplane, it's basically powering up like this and uh, what you have is two different screens. So the real airplane has those screens uh, uh, independent. So I have both screens having the same options and they are split in here. So you have some options on the left one and you have some options on the right one, which is not a big deal. but that uh, just a thing that I have noticed and I have promised to do an uh, honest review on this airplane. Uh, so, system controls close main door. That's something that we don't have. We have to close the door manually, of course, but it's inco incorporated just in the FMC in here. Uh, okay, so as I told you, we're gonna be flying from Geneva down to Dubrovnik, and we are in Gen Geneva, North Apron, and the pushback guy is here. We won't need pushback, we would be able to taxi out ourselves, but yeah, he's here. So, the fly plans you have in the fly plan folder, which is in the link below the video if you want to use the fly plan or you want to fly with me. Okay, mm let's start from the very beginning. So, starting up and powering up the Honda is not really complicated. Uh, you have this initialization page which will guide you through everything. And on the real one, you would have as well system tests, which will be carried out automatically. And you will have a flight plan here, and it doesn't appear, so you just click through the points. So, weight and balance, uh, crew and stores. Uh, we usually put 420. I don't know why, we just started to go with 420. Payload. We don't have any passengers, so zero, and no cargo, zero. Fuel, we have uh, 2680, which is uh, completely enough. Uh, 2680, just to make sure it's the same as in here. Oh, the total fuel. Ah, get for sim, it has the option anyway. Taxi fuel about 100, sounds good for me. And we have all the weights. Uh, Honda Jet is very light jet, it's categorized as very light jet, and the takeoff weight is about, the maximum takeoff weight is about 10,700 pounds, which is roughly 4,800 uh, kilograms, so it's just less, just a little less than 5 tons. Uh, it's really, really small jet, so. You wouldn't expect uh, nothing really big from that. And get from sim. Yeah, there we go. And landing. No, I'm not gonna set the landing for now. 
but we have V1, VR, V2, which is automatically getting set by the avionics, and that's basically the same as the real one. And once we do the initialization, we go through these pay two pages in here. We go with accept, and it should basically show you the big green tick that you have finished that one, but it doesn't here, so. Uh, then we go to map settings, we will just check check the settings we have on the map. So orientation track up, I like the tra track up setting. Uh, traffic I want to have on terrain relative. So it will show the terrain which is above me. Uh, you can go with terrain absolute, which will give you this kind of map. But uh, in my honest opinion, it's really like too much colors. Uh, you don't really need that and it's basically making the picture unclear so I either go with uh, relative uh, terrain or switch it off completely if we're flying in some flat terrain so let's go with relative uh, in Geneva as you know probably there are some higher mountains here so we basically close jobs so we want to see where we're flying. Instead window, flight plan text or nothing. We can have the vertical situation here, but it's not in the simulator yet. Maybe one day it will be. Uh, road city states provinces uh, not up above track vectors, wind vector, fuel ring. And yep, sounds good to me. We have the weather radar and we have the traffic page which is real one as well and we can go with charts but uh, we'll start with the flight plan initially so go back to map flight plan and uh, as i'm running on one screen today uh, you have to apologize me and uh, uh, you can follow along on the flight plan from the link below so we go from Lima Sierra Gulf Gulf and we go down to Lima Delta Delta Uniform Clippy Dubrovnik Clippy. So basically, Garmin is giving you these uh, secondary names in the flight plan, like Clippy. It's not showing Dubrovnik, it will show Clippy. So it might be confusing sometimes, but it's Garmin thing. So. Uh, LSGG to Madam. And Madam in France, obviously. Then. Uh, Load Airway. We're going to go Upper Mic 730. All the way down to Atmat. That's a different way of loading the airways than, for instance, in 737. But uh, after a while, you will get used to that. And it's basically more complicated than 737 because otherwise, you can type in and uh, it's going quicker than this one. But uh, that's the way it is in Garmin. So, nothing to complain about. We go to NITEM, load airway direct to Mokbo uh, Mokbo enter then at en route Gulf Echo November Geneva not Geneva but uh, Genoa Genoa Genova that's the name in Italia Genova, Calmo. <coughs> it will take a little while, so uh, we cannot really skip that. Calmo, Lomad, L L O M A D Lomad. Then we go to Ligno. So basically this one is the most time-taking thing in Honda. Otherwise you can start up the battery and start up the engines uh, about like 
half a minute so oh it's really really quick one you will see in a second Sipo Croatia yep then uh, load airway Lima 607 and we go down to Nerda ah, there we go Sort easy, yeah, that would make life easier, I guess. What is Nerda? I don't have Nerda here, so I guess I will just cancel that one and go direct to Nerda. I should go with Airway, but I don't have it in the database, so. And there is the arrival, so we are done. Procedure, we're going to depart from runway 04. The initial point is Madam. Uh, this one is really easy, you just uh, type in the runway and select the point. The last time I did uh, Madam 5 Charlie in Geneva, uh, 5 Alpha. No, wait, filter by runway. 04 and then I have to go med on 5 November and we can see that actually on chart so you can bring it up and see it on chart on the screen so that's a nice feature and it's already incorporated with the uh, Navigraph chart Anyway, uh, if you have any questions, I will happy. I will be happy to answer them just in a minute. I finish my final preparations for this one, and we go, and I will go to chat and I answer questions. So, Madam, uh, five November, and the sequence is runway zero four five thousand feet. Uh, we can actually zoom that one in. So. We'll see something. Madam 5 November. So 5000 feet, then heading 184, then Golf Golf 604, then Esapi, Esapi, and then uh, distance 27 Papa Alpha Sierra, Venus, and Madam, which is in the computer. And it's loaded already. So uh, approach, I don't load approach yet and cancel no i don't want to cancel that what is your problem then ah there is no problem <coughs> and if we go to charts so we can go to the airport briefing or action or the airport briefing but the airport and you can see even the airplane position here so that's quite a cool feature and we'll be departing from the runway 04 so we'll be departing this direction north east direction we are on apron uh, on north apron we can taxi via zulu and as it's quite long runway we can depart from zulu we still have like 2200 meters from here which for honda jet is complete enough so there's going to be quite short taxi uh, and we checked already the departure Except one thing which we didn't set on this one uh, procedure and preview on chart. So we don't have the initial stop altitude set, and we're gonna be climbing. We're going to be climbing to flight level. I'm not sure if it's written on chart, sometimes it is, sometimes it's not. Uh, initial climb clearance light level 90 so we're gonna set it up on the FM on the MCP uh, for some reason Garmin made all the switches other way around if you notice if you fly a 737 you have speed uh, heading altitude and here you have heading altitude speed and if you switch airplanes that one might be a bit confusing so uh, 
that's basically a bit a bit confusing to some people in the beginning. Active nav going to FMS and we have to set the call selector to 044 which is on my heading. And PFD settings, so the PFD settings, altitude units. Uh, I don't want to go with inches, I want to go with the hectopascal. And I'm not sure if I can switch that in here. Maybe somebody in the chat will know that, but uh, in the Garmin itself you go to PFD settings and then you go to all the PFD settings, attitude units and you should be able to switch that to hectopascal. And since I don't have that, uh, I will just go to the charts, info and copy the elevation. Okay, approach whichever ILS22, not minimums, but ILS22. The elevation is 1411, so we're gonna set it down here. Three zero zero nine. 3009 and is it set on the other one yes it does so that's basically cancel I don't want to uh, delete any fly plan uh, map and fly plan cancel uh, that's basically what we have to do before we start the engines and aircraft systems I go to electrical to see what's the power we have 23 volts which is not really too bad but uh, it looks like the battery is discharging even if we have the external power on oh yeah now we have the external power and we have 28 volts so it should work uh, so guys back on the chats uh, good afternoon good morning everyone so uh, uh, welcome to the channel. If you are new one, I'm happy to see you. I see some old faces as well. And so, uh, ladies and gentlemen, we have uh, Mr. Marwan Garib, which is the creator of this airplane, and he is on the chat as well. So, uh, happy to see you here. Uh, awesome. Yeah, Swavik saying toilet is really small. IRS are automatic align. Uh, Kamix is asking is IRS are automatic. Basically, it is airplane. Most of the things are automatic. Like uh, I said, you cannot really control the fuel or anything or uh, hydraulics. You don't even have hydraulics switches here. So uh, you can switch off some pneumatics but uh, you can't really control preservation or something it's just a couple of buttons and most of the stuff in here is really automatic one uh, or lights if you switch on all to normal uh, they're gonna be automatic you can switch on manually taxi lights or landing lights or something but if you go to normal it's gonna be automatic again uh, so that's a feature that is modeled by the developer and uh, yeah it's working as far as i know so that's a honda thing okay once we're ready for startup uh, i guess this pushback guy will be waiting for us but i will just taxi through him so that's what i shouldn't do but i will anyway so the startup on this airplane is really really easy one uh, Basically, we hit the start button and move the lever to idle and the uh, FADEC, so full authority digital engine control will do everything by, by itself. So you don't have really much to control about that. Uh, of course, if you see that something is going wrong, uh, you should cut the engine yourself, but 99% uh, of cases 
if something is wrong, it will cut itself. So, uh, if we are cleared for startup, we'll be starting engine number two. I press the start and I move it back to idle. That's what I have to do. And all the startup sequence will go by itself here. And compared to the real one, uh, the simulator have a really hot start. So the real Honda is starting at 400 degrees Celsius. This one is going up to 700, but otherwise no big issue with that. And start is cut off, so we can start engine number one. And the same story for engine number one. And we have this green halo which was here for startup. Once the start is disconnected, it will extinguish. We won't need ice protection. If you go to environmental page, you will see how it was, uh, how the pressurization is working, but you don't have any control about that. Not, not really much about at least. But I'll show you that in flight. So we have two idle engines, two stable engines. We can do the after start flow, which is going flaps take approach. Check the speed brake. Uh, speed brake extended and then we click it to go back to retract it and the speed brake on Honda Jet is this little two panels in the back which are quite efficient in, uh, efficient in flight they're not really efficient on the ground but uh, in flight they're really efficient landing gear oh yeah 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 don't do that don't do that to me please so flaps speed brake flight controls forward back left, right, and rather left, center, right, center, and now I have to go to Toga. I don't know if it's modeled yet or not, but I don't think so. Uh, so instead of Toga we go to flight level change 140. The initial speed on Honda is always 140 knots. Uh, so 140 and I go with NAV, which will uh, jump into the FMS. That's basically all the before taxi procedures you have to do. So extend power is disconnected. Uh, the engine sound is quite nice. Uh, I guess it's just pre-recorded from some Honda jet. So. It's uh, quite nice, actually, inside, if you're sitting inside a Honda, it's more quiet than that one, but just a minor issue. And we are going to taxi, so we go to charts. And I want to have this Apple chart to see where I'm going, uh, even if I know the place where I'm going, I just uh, show you that one so you have any idea where we're taxing to. And 1 to 2 8 as we are on that sim. And just to double check, there is nobody on the control or something. No, it's not. So once we have done, th done that one, we can release the parking brake. And the nose wheel steering on Honda is uh, steered by wire, so it's not physically connected to the nose wheel and as you're gonna taxi it will change the ratio itself, so uh, initially taxiing the Honda is a bit difficult, it's really responsive, uh, if you add a little power it's just uh, jumping ahead. 
so a matter of getting used to as everything and you have to apply it rather really smoothly otherwise the people in the back will be just shaking left to right like this yeah so it's giving a good feeling in taxi hydraulics and yeah we go with status and you can notice how the lights will change uh, as we go so if I stop the taxi light will go off and once I start taxing the taxi light will go back to on so that's the Honda logic uh, you can control these lights as I told you but to be honest nobody does it's like flying PlayStation so Okay, you're just gonna be stopped on the taxiway, won't you? Of course. So maybe if uh, you are here, you can tell me if I can switch to the hectopascals instead of inches. That would be useful. And we go to the left and we are almost approaching the runway. So I will go to the bay, stop at the bay. So Geneva has this procedure that if you are departing you're going into the bay and if somebody is landing he will pass you and then you can line up and take off so I will stop in the bay and uh, we'll just double check everything so uh, we won't forget stuff before takeoff And I will take a look in the chat, maybe there is something I have missed. So that's the CAT2 holding point, we're not going to use that one as it's CAT1. So we go all the way down to the CAT1 holding point 22 at Zulu, which is just in here. And yeah, let's stop in here, set the parking brake. Oral warning, okay. Oral warning, okay. Super, we go to map. And I will take a look at the chart. Uh, people asking if we can see the toilet. Yeah, definitely. Soon we will see the airplane sight. Uh, Pilot A340. I've been on board the Honda Jet, so I know how it looks. Yeah, it's a really small airplane, as you probably notice. Uh, hi, Mosky. Doing. Alabama is saying nicest airplane in the game so far. It's actually really nice, but we'll talk about through that uh, soon. Especially, uh, especially the manual handling. Uh, it's really amazing. Uh, I expected. I'll be honest. I did expect that if somebody is making the airplane to Microsoft Flight Simulator 2020, the physics and the feeling will be shit but this one is really feeling like a uh, real Honda so uh, oh, awesome job man, that's awesome job uh, I'm not really amazed about the Garmin tank yet but the exterior interior and uh, handling is awesome, that I can tell you uh, Adrian asking is it's voice of the captain speaking, yes, that's me, Taktoya, uh, Cześć, Adrian. So, uh, let's go, uh, let's do the final check. We don't have the checklist yet, and the checklist in the real one is incorporated in here, but uh, you don't really have too much checklist to do in here, so you have flaps, 
and you have the engines which uh, is done and the last thing to do is trim and the trim on Honda Jet is basically uh, four units if you're a flaps takeoff approach and three units if you're flaps up there's nothing else to do so it's always three or four uh, so let's line up and take off this one so it's clear on the right and it's clear on the left so we are on VAT sim so I just have to double check that and this airplane is really nervous on the ground so uh, it's actually depicted quite well in here so if you move rudder pedals too quickly uh, it will just shake everybody in the back left and right so nicely done man nicely done so once we lined up on the runway uh, that's not the best lineup I did in my life we are going to set the take of trust so basically we pull the thrust levers fully forward there's nothing else here so the FADEC is taking care about that. Airspeed alive. It's again another thing that you don't control. It's either full thrust or not, 80 knots. V1. Rotate. Positive rate. Gear up. I have some caution, but we'll double check that. And as you see, with this engine power, it will roll all the way up to 20 degrees and it's still accelerating. We have 1000 approaching. Go to MCT, autopilot on, yield dampener on, and transponder mode. Yeah, the transponder would be automatic here, so that's another thing which is not a Honda model, but it should be automatic. So we're gonna maintain uh, 140 until passing 3000 feet above the aerodrome, then retract the flaps. Ice detected, okay. So once ice detected is uh, on you have to switch on the engine on the ice the wing on the ice will be automatic and ice detected is not longer present so I switch it off I don't have any cloud so I don't see a reason for ice and we are passing 3000 so flaps up and speed going to 210 210 knots yeah the MFS is not really the easiest to navigate through so Then, and we're going to set standard 2992 and on the left or on the right one as well so we have MCT uh, flaps up, gear up, autopilot on and that's after takeoff check is completed and we're going to climb to level 430 initially uh, not initially but we're going to climb to 430 uh, the Honda Jet is certified to fly at level 430 and it usually does, so the most flights we do is either 410 or 430. Uh, even at maximum takeoff weight, uh, it's quite easy to fly that at 430, so uh, she doesn't have much problem with that. Uh, the one thing is that if you climb 430 and you're heavy, you're going to be really, really slow. But you're gonna sure see that in a second. Uh, 430 is set, standard is set, and yep, we are climbing out here.
that as we passing flight level 100 we can do this standard 10 checks so the fuel is balanced we don't really have any pumps to switch on or off we can switch pumps either normal or on so if you go to on you will just force them to be on if they are normal and they usually normal they will operate automatically cabin power off yeah that's my bad So fuel balance lights are uh, going back to normal. Uh, we always checked, check if we haven't switched any lights to uh, on or off, so we go back to normal. Pressurization is climbing and it's all set. We don't have the landing field elevation yet, which would give me the orange message here. So I have to have any landing field elevation, but if I have destination the flight plan, uh, it would copy the field elevation uh, and lights normal passengers released and you have the passenger lights in uh, system controls interior lights so you control the lights from the FMC like everything else Ten checks completed. Awesome. It's really nicely made airplane. So uh, well done. Uh, well done. Most of the systems are working already. So we're waiting for the official release now. And as you see. Honda is climbing quite quickly to levels like uh, this but once you get to level approximately 300 350 uh, then those engines are getting a little bit too small for the airplane so uh, it's flying really cool and nice close to the ground but once you get uh, once you get higher the engines are getting a bit too small for this airplane and it's getting either slow or uh, with uh, flying a very low rate of climb. We already have 2500 per minute which is not an amazing one but it will get worse. Uh, at 400 you will get about 500 feet per minute so I go back to the chat and I will leave you with this external view So, we have 100 people watching the video, thank you very much and welcome to the channel. I'm not sure if it's free, so uh, uh, I'm not saying that it's gonna be freeware. It might be, but might be not, but Marwan will probably know the price. Uh, If you want to be up to date with this project, uh, you should join the Discord page and the Discord page is either in the link or the name of the Discord is in the link. So uh, for the latest info you should be joining the Discord page. Okay, so we have departed and we are climbing to level 200. Uh, I haven't aligned the heading select. We press the heading select and it will jump to the position it should be. Yeah, more or less what yeah, it will. And this cockpit is really a really small one. So uh, if you put your iPad in here and some water or food or something, it's just getting uh, messy. So that's too small. The fly deck is too small, but what to do? And we can go through the cabin actually. So everything in the fly deck is modeled. Uh, I have noticed just one button that is missing, and that's the checklist button. 
you have the scroll wheel for the checklist, but you don't have the checklist button here, but otherwise I see everything. And the flight deck is nicely done. We talked about the Garmin, which is uh, the kind of default Garmin uh, with some twitches or changes made by the developers. And you can split that in half, as you see. I'm not sure if you can control that map because uh, you can split that in half and you would be able to control that half from this FMC and basically you can go with weather, traffic or whatsoever on this side so uh, maybe it's not working feature yet I go with full, I usually prefer to fly in full and I have too many information here So I don't want to have intersections and I don't need airways. Yeah, sounds about right now. So we saw the fly deck. The fly deck is really nicely modeled. Uh, with even with the handles, placards, etc., etc. Uh, I can click on the sunshade, but uh, it doesn't seem to work. At least not for me. Uh, maybe there is some trick, yeah, you can use the sunshade as well. The actual size of this sunshade is like half of the iPod. So, uh, it's really small, it's not really a useful one, but uh, you have it modeled on both sides. And if you go to the cabin, you will see the most important feature of Honda Jet, which are these uh, small small storage drawers and it's the lucky place for pilots because if you want to snack or drink or something you can just reach it easily uh, here you have the fifth seat uh, the side facing seat it can be used as a normal seat and uh, it's quite comfy actually except that if you sit here uh, you don't see much outside so just see the door and this uh, step would fall down to be level and will form a, ta a table so it's actually on the other side it has a table but it's not really important here uh, you have four club seats in the cabin and they basically moving around left, right, forward, back. So they freely moving around the cabin. You can form something like uh, connect. Uh, I mean, move those seats inbound inside, and they will be like a couch, which is not very really comfy, but uh, it's still something. If you are in the f cabin, you can see the engines here. Uh, you have two tables, quite a big ones, quite useful. So and the screens, everything, are controlled by the buttons. You have the buttons up here. Uh, I don't think you have it in the simulator. Or, if you want, you can control the sun shades from the uh, panel in here. It's just under the armrests. So that's how it looks inside. Can I open the door? Yes, I can open the door. So that's how small the Honda is inside. And then we go to the toilet, to the bathroom, uh, which is another small thing in here, but it has a window, so it's actually having a window in here. Uh, they call it a skylight or something, so that's the best shit of your life. Okay, that's it, and basically this place, I can tell you, you cannot sit, it's like more crouching position than sitting position, but that's not really important here. So as you see, the cabin is nicely modeled, and yep, let's go back to flight deck, see what's happening here. As you see, we have passed flight load 300, and the climb rate is already 1600 feet per minute, so it's getting a bit low already. And yeah, we have the synthetic vision, we have everything here, that's a cool feature. <clears throat> yeah, 
and of course it's Microsoft Flight Simulator, so it is looking outside way way better than X-Plane or the Prepper. So back to the chat, uh, Delta is saying it's uh, looking gorgeous even in motion, it actually does, it's really nice, so in motion it's looking even better than uh, static ones. And Delta is saying if it's going to be paywall or donation where uh, depending on the Honda, so Honda is kind of, uh, let's say, different because all the aircraft manufacturers would say like, yeah, just go ahead, do it and take money for that and everybody would be happy and Honda is a bit uh, stiff and they try to keep the secrets, so even if you're doing the type rating on Honda, they're not giving you all the information, they just give you what you need. And if you ask something uh, that is not in the book, in the training manual, they will say, we don't know, you're not supposed to know that. Like, I was asking if I can do single engine taxi in Honda. And they're saying like, uh, we don't know, Honda is not saying nothing, so that's basically the Honda way. And yeah, 210 and we still max 642. And we should already be on Mach 59 or 58. So that's the standard climb speed and level change would change to 58 itself. So. Uh, another thing to work on, but uh, yeah, that's just it. So we have momentarily better performance, but once we get 5.8, it will get back to the uh, lower climb rate. Okay, we're approaching Madam. We are already over. Uh, Italy, Limph uh, is Torino and we are going to be heading uh, west, east, sorry not west, towards Genova, Geneva, Geneva is uh, Switzerland, Genoa, then uh, Rimini and we pass uh, Adriatic Sea and fly towards Croatia and you see these rings and those rings are saying uh, the dotted ring is 143 minutes what, what we have on fuel and uh, the big ring, the solid ring is the place at which we will actually run out of fuel so that's nice so if we continue to fly we would crash around Greece probably and once we reach 5.8 the rate is again 1200-ish so that's not amazing great from Honda, but that's pretty enough. Yeah, I think it should be payware, like uh, if somebody making so much effort, it should be payware, so I flew they were stuff that was worse done than this one, so uh, that one should be definitely paywall, and especially even if it's still work in progress, it's already nicely made, so we're waiting for the final version, let's close this one, and 
the toilet on uh, Honda is usually used for stowing excess bags. So if somebody's coming on board and he has six or seven bags that don't fit in the back, and they usually fit, but they, if they won't, we just put in the toilet, which is not really approved procedure, but what to do. Uh, okay. So, uh, does it have a custom autopilot or the MSFS one? Uh, it does have the Garmin autopilot. So, actually, Honda is using the Garmin autopilot, uh, which is kind of, I don't know what's the answer on the question then, if it's custom or not. Uh, I know that uh, Microsoft Flight Simulator is having this uh, autopilot as well, but I'm not sure if it's. Uh, customized or not here and we're passing 410 so once we pass 410 we usually getting direct to destination because there is no traffic above 410 just a business jets and that's not really crowded uh, space but I will just leave the uh, flight plan like it is so we have some more time to talk It actually has custom CSC. Uh, yes, that's a good point. Uh, CSC is a button in here, which is cruise speed control. So the Honda itself doesn't have the auto throttle, as you have noticed. Uh, it's all throttled by wire, so the thrust levers are not connected to anything physically. It's just uh, computerized position of the throttle. But if you get to the cruising altitude, you can switch on the cruise speed control and it will maintain the speed at which it was switched on. So it's kind of the auto throttle, but uh, it has really limited authority. So uh, basically, the authority of this is plus minus 5% from the moment it was switched on. But that's perfectly enough for cruise. Uh, anyway, if we are flying 430, uh, we would 99% of times just stay in the MCT. So, if you 430 and you are MCT, you're not going to exceed the speed. So, you just stay at the MCT. You want to get uh, to the destination as soon as possible. You know, those people don't really care about fuel. And uh, on the other hand, it's not using a lot of fuel. So the simulator Honda is using 400 pounds per engine and the real Honda is using around 300 at this altitude. So that's approximately 200 pounds per hour more than the real one. So we are at the cruising altitude. Let me just double check the fuel, if we have the fuel to go to the destination, I guess we do have. And you can take a look on the speed. We are level, but the speed is barely rising, so it's not really the fastest accelerating airplane. And even that, this one is accelerating quicker than the real one, so... And on the top of climb, we should have uh, 1980, we have 2200 roughly. And the next point is going to be Moss Mokbo with 2172. Mokbo, I have Mokbo at 1750, so I have. 300 something extra fuel, so we're still on the safe side. Uh, so, let's talk about the avionics in here. And uh, as you see, the airplane is accelerating to some 0.64 Mach, which is not really the fastest airplane, but as you see, it's almost straight wing. So, that straight wing will give you the really bad or speed at the altitude so if you have Phenom 300 the Embraer Phenom 300 
and Venom 300 has the swept wing and it's not really much swept, it's like 20 degrees swept in Venom and it already has cruising speed of 7 point, uh, 0.77 Mach and we have maximum 0.72 which is not really an amazing one uh, so this status page you see the lights which are on or off the strobe lights are on the beacon and nav are on the strobe lights will go on once you get to the runway the beacon once you press the start button and the nav lights basically uh, go on in flight or the night time when you switch on the battery so they have quite complicated logic you have the ice light which is uh, illuminating the uh, leading edge of the wing so you can see if there is any ice but the the icing anti-icing system is really efficient so you will get the ice detected light as you saw before and it will remove uh, all the ice in a matter of seconds so the status page uh, hydraulics that's all we know about the hydraulics in here oxygen quantity and the fire bottles and those doors is showing in blue so basically if they close they would be just blackish color so that's the difference I see here let's go back to aircraft systems environmental so you have the environmental page here oh yeah we're almost reaching the uh, VMO so let's put it back a little so around 90% would do in here but uh, I'm not sure if it's gonna keep the speeds CSC ah it's working awesome so once the CSC is on it will maintain speed 0 0.701 uh, I didn't know before I was not able to do that so once you get the CSC uh, working you don't have to really worry about the speed uh, we'll see we'll see how it's working here so environmental it's giving you the oxygen quantity again uh, the target temperatures and the fan speeds and the duct temperatures which you can cannot do much about that and you have depicted all the line so all the valves with position the heat exchanger and the fan so you can go to the system control thermostat and like the real one you can go to cockpit let's say and reduce the temperature and you have target 20 actual 23 and you will see that it will start operating sooner or later on the other hand you can go to let's say cabin and go fun mode manual you get this ECS temperature control manual and you can put fun let's say 8 and the fun speed is going to 8 I'm not sure if the real Honda has 8 or 7 as maximum but uh, I never noticed that so you go to manual and it's going Scion so if something is automatic in Honda or in Garmin it's magenta like the speed is automatic or the FMS is automatic so it's basically originating from the FMS it's magenta and if something is manually selected like the fan speed here is manually selected it's going to Scion like blue so uh, that's logic that's nicely done here so if something is automatic is magenta if not is cyan so I go back to normal and it's going to fan speed 1 and it's going magenta again uh, okay let's go to echo systems again electrical you already saw that page uh, and Honda has two batteries and depending on the version either we have two same batteries and the newer version one of the batteries is smaller because they saying they saving weight and the batteries are just located in here so 
from the shape of this door uh, I can see it better here this door I would say that's the older version because the newer one has just the access latch which is really small and the older ones you can remove the battery yourself and the newer ones you cannot you have to remove the panel and you have all the buses which are connected so let's go to fuel and Honda Jet has four tanks and the newer one has five tanks which are not depicted in here and the fuel is actually managed itself so you cannot really control the fuel pumps you can just switch it on and off but uh, it's all interconnected so if you have any imbalance you can either go to cross feet to left or right and it will switch on the pump etc etc or go back to normal and wait so even if you don't cross feet like here uh, the fuel it will balance itself so the system is really easy to operate and it's very rare that you have any imbalance on the jet so. go to hydraulics uh, we have one reservoir uh, we have one hydraulic pump and we have three accumulators so if we lose the hydraulic pump uh, we still have some accumulator pressure to drop gear or use the normal brakes or use the emergency brakes of course we have procedures for everything so if we lose the hydraulics you will have to drop the alternate uh, you will have to drop the gear manually uh, just to conserve the pressure so uh, you can see that they have these check valves here so the system is really uh, well taught and quite easy to operate I mean easy to operate if you lose the pump you just lose the everything and you just have some pressure and the thing is that once we lose the pump we cannot taxi after landing that's the important thing there was a situation in Warsaw at which uh, it was not my own that had to be specific the guys lost the pump and they decided to vacate the runway so they basically vacated the runway and I can show you that uh, because why not they basically <coughs> sorry uh, vacated the runway and they went off they landed the runway tree tree they turned left in here and they managed to turn right in here and they left, lost all the pressure and they just uh, ran to the grass so that's the reason you don't taxi once you lost the hydraulic pressure and the last page is size protection and it's all automatic you can switch something on and off but you don't really do that except the engine anti-ice which is manual it's not uh, FMC controlled so the wing anti-ice and the tail anti-ice and the pitots and the windows are automatic and just the engine anti-ice is manual you can switch on the engine anti-ice and it will open the valve show green once it's on the operating temperature likewise on the right one and the wing anti-ice I go on it will open the valves and go on in here but I don't want to use it at this altitude because we are losing too much power on the engines uh, the interesting thing about the tail anti-ice in here uh, which is controlled from here it's automatic again it has normal position so if something has normal position in the Honda it means that it will be automatic uh, so it's on now and the interesting thing that uh, Honda is using this anti-ice it's not either electric or pneumatic pneumatic but it's like every half of the uh, tail fin has six hammers inside 
and they just keep bumping in the surface from inside to crush the ice. So, uh, if you switch it on, on the ground, you can hear like this uh, hammering sound, which is quite loud. In flight you cannot hear it, but on the ground you can hear it. And that's the last page from the uh, synoptic pages, they call it, in here. Uh, aircraft systems, environmental... And yeah, it's, we said 20, it went down to 20. And you don't want to hit this speed box uh, page because the FMC will get stuck. So that I know already. I checked it myself, and I know the developer knows about the glitch. So they probably working on it. Okay, so uh, as far as I know, I talked about everything. We have 90 people watching me. Thank you very much, guys. CSC will slightly undershoot for now, needs a bit of tweaking. Uh, actually, yeah, it does. It does undershoot by 0 0.7, 0 0.07, which is not much. And uh, keep in mind that the real CSC uh, it's not really perfect either, so it will keep either 7.1 or 6.9, so that's quite normal for the CSC, special in turbulent conditions. But yeah, it's working, so it's giving you some relief. Otherwise, if you don't have the auto throttle in jet airplane, you would have to watch the speed all the time. So that's a nice feature here. Uh, definitely looks like payway quality already. Yeah, it does. Uh, it looks like payway quality for me. How do you rate the noise level in the cabin compared to other airplanes? So, uh, to be honest, uh, the noise level uh, compared to the business jets, to the other business jets, it's really quiet. Uh, on the ground, once you start the engines, you don't feel absolutely nothing. Like, uh, those engines are mounted on the wing, not on the fuselage. So. Once I will start the engines, you will just notice the air conditioning will switch on. You won't hear the engines on the ground inside. So, on the ground it's really, really super quiet. And once you get the take power, it's getting a bit uh, more noisy, but uh, compared to, let's say, even big airplanes like uh, Challenger 350 or something, it's really quiet anyway. Uh, and for, that's for beast jets, and the beast jets are in general a bit more, uh, actually a bit louder than the airliners. So that's the noise level of 737 inside, I would say maybe 737 max, which is quite a good achievement uh, for the beast jet. And Daniel was asking before if your real Honda Jet uh, has the working synthetic vision. Yes, it does, and it's really a cool feature. So, if you compare this one to a 737, that's like a spaceship. So, uh, even the 737 Max uh, is still airplane from 80s compared to Honda Jet. So, you probably see that. And uh, absolute relative, relative, and on the rear one, I have the option of uh, getting the satellite weather in here, and the satellite weather would be depicted on the map. So that's what you cannot do about the uh, 
this one. And the biggest pain in the ass of Honda Jet is that it doesn't really have the APU. So, since it doesn't have the APU, it's uh, getting hot or cold inside. Uh, Swabek, are you the only real world Honda Jet pilot testing this airplane? I don't know to be honest, but uh, maybe yes, maybe not. But So, uh, we can start preparing for some approach already. Uh, we are flying to Dubrovnik and the initial point will be cancelled. Madame at Mat Okbo Kamo Turbo Nerja. Yeah, we start from Nerja. We should put something inside the FMS already. Flight plan, procedure, approach, actually arrival, and we're going to land on runway 11 perhaps, so Lima Delta Delta uniform, arrival and approach RLS Zulu, just let me double check the weather, uh, I'm using the real world weather, so just check the matters. Zero nine zero seven knots, so we definitely landing on around one one. Uh, arrival. We're going to go Nerja. Nerja. Uh, yeah. Nerja to X ray to Zulu, but. Uh, Nerja to Brovnik Pilap. Okay, that makes sense for me. Flight plan, cancel, procedure, arrival, runway, sold by, runway please, runway 11. One one. Uh, Nerja to. Which one is it? To X ray, to Zulu. To X ray is the long one, and I want to Zulu. I just want the short one. Nerja to Zulu. Nerja, Delta Uniform 601, and then peel up and then runway 11, which is loaded. Then approach, and I want to have RLS Zulu 11, transition, peel up, load. It's important in Garmin not to hit activate. If you hit activate at this point, it will just switch onto approach mode. Uh, that's the Garmin thing. That uh, if you mm, click it by mistake, it's just getting active anyway. So we're going Nerda, Delta Uniform 601, then peel up. And I'm not sure if I can remove that point in here. Uh, I will give it a try, or actually, let's go to map and see how does it look on the map. Delta Uniform 601, build up Delta Uniform 402, and then Dubrovnik. Looks good for me here. And now go for the nav setting. Approach, unless Zulu. Uh, basically, it would be automatic in here. It will set the frequencies automatically. Uh, but this Garmin doesn't do that, so it's either working title or. Uh, 
touch a developer and what. It's not a big issue, just have to remember that. So go to audios radios and we have uh, ILS Zulu localized Zulu runner 11 chart 11-1. 80s we're gonna check later. 110 decimal 1. 110 decimal 1. Transfer to active nav 2 is the same. 110 decimal 1. 110 decimal 1. Once again. And DME. Uh, we don't have DAP frequency here, so I guess it's gonna be automatic. On Honda we have separate DME, so we can switch on the DME from the other place. Uh, and ADF CAFTAT 397, which I can use. ADF 397, transfer active. Yeah, that was too quick. 30397, zero, zero, active. Okay, that's all done, and we are approaching Lomad, fly plan, cancel, we don't have any VNAV just yet, but uh, I have to switch on some altitudes. So let's go in here, yep, fly plan. Cancel. Peel up is 5000 above, so. Uh, come on, peel up. Uh, it's 5000 above, so I don't need that one yet. And final approach fix is this one, and it's gonna be 2600 feet. Which is set. And then build up is 6,700, and all the other ones are corrected. So this Dubrovnik should be, it should be possible to remove that. And as far as I remember before, if I remove that, it will just mess up with the flight plan. So I'm not going to touch it. And I'm not going to touch the landing speeds either. Because if I go to speed box, it will crash the FMC, which is known issue. But I can go to aircraft systems, maybe utility sensitization and speed box in here. Ah, I can can get the landing here. Okay. Anyway, approach speed is about uh, 115. We maintain usually 120, so that should work. Sorry guys, losing my voice a little. So going back to charts, uh, we have final approach right 114, and to set that, if I want to set it manually, I have to go to heading. So we switch on to heading, and we have to go to active nav 1142, and then set the course. One on four, one volley. That's a Garmin pain in the ass thing. So. One on four. Active or two. Ah, shit, not this selector. One on three, one on four. Active is. FMS and back to nav. Yeah, it's FMS, so... No. I'm not going to set the left one. Uh, just yet, so... Looks good for me. So we are flying over the Italy, we are approaching Rimini. Rimini is just here and we have this little dot. Is San Marino, one of the smallest countries in Europe. In the award, probably. So we're just over central uh, Italy now. And I had VNAV, but I lost VNAV for some reason. Uh, VNAV enabled, yeah, there we go. 
okay. And we have 31 minutes to descend, so what else I can do is set the minimums and the landing field elevation, aircraft systems, environmental. I can switch it off totally, which doesn't work Not like this. But How would I switch? Uh, how would I set the landing field elevation here? System controls, nah, thermostat, nah. I think it should be here, the environmental page, but I just don't have it, so uh, I just leave it uh, empty, blank, whatsoever, and the minimums. settings and how would you set the minimums here that's the other thing I see you cannot see it. set the minimums and I don't want to go to speed bugs which would crash the FMC uh, yeah it's cav okay anyway we don't have any clouds so it doesn't really matter but uh, yeah you should be able to set up the minimums here and I go back to chat maybe somebody will ask the questions Uh, Kasper saying pretty easy small plane so far. Uh, so yes, uh, Honda is like PlayStation, as I saw, told you before. It's really easy to fly and to operate. Is there any collaboration between the Honda Jet and World Title developers? I don't know. I have no idea. The landing page is under construction, so uh, that's a good point. It's, it would be useful, probably. Yeah, the landing field elevation should be automatic. Uh, you can set it manually in Honda, but uh, once you put any destination in here, uh, it will just give you that one here. And uh, at 430, you have the altitude of cabin altitude of 8000 feet exactly, and the real one has the same. So uh, it's 8000 plus minus 10 feet. So that's quite quite satisfying. And we still have 30 a lot. 35 minutes to top of descent, but it's actually rising. Why is it rising? Top of descent is here, so it should be actually decreasing, but it's fine. Uh, it's depicted at the correct place, but uh, the time to top of descent is rising instead of uh, dropping. So that's a funny glitch. And the Honda, like uh, most of the small business jets, uh, will not descend on the idle power, unlike the 737s or the big airplanes. Uh, you will maintain 3 degree glide path, but it's not idle power. So uh, you have to be prepared that you will use about 75-80% of N1 just to descend. Maybe if I go direct to next point, it will recalculate that. So if you want to go direct to the point, you just go to fly plan. And let's say we're flying this one, and I want to go direct to Ligno. Ligno direct, you can put the altitude if you want on this one, but we don't want any specific direct to Ligno and it should start turning just in a second I'm not sure what is this message active flight plan is desynchronized please delete the active flight plan to resolve 
but I don't want to do that. So, just to keep in mind, uh, maybe it's something I don't understand, but uh, I have this message. But in general, it's really nicely made airplane. It's uh, as you see, most of the systems are working. It still needs some work in the FMS, but otherwise it's awesome. Deck, we should have okay estimated time of arrival 10 12 UTC and the time now is 10 12 but it's over the point over the leak now uh, you can change all these fields you can actually customize that so endurance we have 248 can fly two hours 48 minutes on the fuel we have uh, we have 282 miles total to go bearing to next point we are flying for 41 minutes uh, the track 94 fuel on destination that's a nice useful feature so uh, we should have about 1400 1400 pounds of fuel and the ground speed and you can actually set up avionic setup MFD fields. You can change all these fields. Like, I don't really need burring. Uh, I would rather prefer to have. at a en route to destination near yeah, 4159. For some reason, it's rising. Maybe uh, estimated time for arrival 10:15. Yeah, I have messed something with the FMC because last time I flew that one, uh, I didn't have this message uh, and it was working well. So uh, I'm sure I have messed something up uh, or it's a glitch, but I think it's my fault. Fuel on board, ground speed, and TAS. Fuel over destination, fuel over destination, I should have it twice now, yeah. I want to have true airspeed. For instance. And as you see, we're maintaining true airspeed of 400 knots. Honda is uh, named Honda Jet Hotel Alpha 420 HA420 because the Honda claims it can do 420 knots on cruise through airspeed. Uh, you can do 420, but if you flew at like 360 or 350 on these altitudes, you can do 400 ish if you're lucky. So. That's quite unusual to fly 430 with that speed. Usually would be like 180 indicated point uh, 63 and through a speed of 360 ish. So that's a good speed anyway. And that one has updated, but actually still ascending. So I don't know why is it. So. Uh, I guess we're gonna do some more flights on Honda Jet if you like it. And yeah, thanks for watching, thanks for coming. Uh, I didn't expect 70 some people, <coughs> actually 80 people. 
uh, we had even hundreds at the moment so I did not expect that at all uh, so everybody thank you very much welcome to the channel if you like that subscribe for more videos and at the moment to be honest I'm thinking to do the separate channel for the streams but we'll see maybe not maybe yes uh, and let's go back to the channel to the chat uh, that message is uh, working that to flight plan tank it's the synchronization between the in-game flight plan manager and the aircraft flight planning system uh, so basically if I set the flight plan in the in-game it shouldn't give the message as far as understood thanks for showing us I just joined so sorry if I was asked before but do you know when we can expect the release the release is not stated yet and we have to say thank you to Marwan because he is the developer, the, at least the main developer of the airplane and he gave us that one to test. So thanks to him we have this video today. Okay, so before we start descent we're just passing the eastern coast of uh, Italy. Uh, we just passed Rimini here. San Marino and we have Pescara somewhere here as, yeah, as well so before we start the descent I go on a used uh, short break uh, we can see already Croatia in here so two minutes break and I'm back with you guys Okay, back with you folks, and let's jump into the flight, I can see the top of descent coming up. Uh, 29 minutes, but... Uh, is it company call? No. So, I'm on duty, so they can call me to fly. Uh, 29 minutes, and it's showing the active waypoint as Ligno, which it shouldn't be. Fly plan cancel. Now we're flying direct to Purple, so activate leg to waypoint. Leak no Purple. Now what you gonna do now? Yeah, nothing special. So 
I will just let it fly uh, this way. Oh, and now I fixed the time to top of descent. It's actually descending, so it was my fault. Okay, so we have 10 minutes and so I am on duty as I told you, so I might go to fly today, but uh, the chance is not too big because on Sunday I'm flying to Farnborough for the simulator, uh, my every half year simulator, and after that I will fly to Philadelphia to pick up the new Honda for the company. And I will take this Honda to cross the North Atlantic. So, quite an experience coming up. So, if you like this virtual flying with me, leave me a feedback, feedback or comment uh, so I know if I should do it or not. Uh, if you don't like it, just yeah. Just give me feedback as well, so maybe I can improve something. Uh, and yep, yeah, 10 minutes, 8 minutes, almost uh, top of descent. So basically, at this point, I would usually arm VNAV, but I see the VNAV doesn't work, it doesn't have this feature. So it will show me the vertical deviation, uh, either I'm too low or too high, but it doesn't let me use VNAV, at least not yet. Uh, that's the feature missing here. Marwan is asking what's the process of this ferry, so basically the process is gonna be uh, the airplane is already registered in states and it's on the Polish registration so we're gonna pick it up in uh, next to Philadelphia, it's actually Newcastle uh, which is like about 20 miles down from Philadelphia we're going to fly to Goose Bay in Canada, from Goose Bay we're gonna fly to Narsarsvak in uh, Greenland, then Keflavik in Iceland and then to Europe. Uh, we don't know if we can make it from uh, Keflavik down to continental Europe or we're gonna fly to Norway or uh, let's say Manchester or some island airport. But we cannot reach reach Warsaw from uh, Iceland. Uh, 
the real range of Honda is not really amazing, so uh, that's the worst thing about the jet, that the range is very bad, so it's gonna be like four or five stops at least. But it will be probably a cool trip anyway. Uh, I will take some videos of uh, flying through the Atlantic and I will publish them. Uh, definitely some landing videos and my Polish subscribers asked me to do a vlog, the video blog, but we'll see about that. And uh, the landing videos will be published definitely somewhere. So stay tuned if you like it okay so we do have the ILS uh, Zulu runway 11 and uh, we have already briefed that in case of misapproach go right and climb all the way down to uh, 182 outbound climb 4000 feet and hold uh, actually I did my two first go arounds in Dubrovnik on Honda jet so it was fun it was uh, crosswind up to 24 knots, which is doesn't sound bad if you're flying a 737. But if you're flying Honda, it's already getting really, really a lot. So. so I guess now I have to activate this point. To get the correct uh, top of the center. What you gonna do? No, 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 no. You don't want to fly there. Just give me direct to SEPA, please. Yeah, awesome. Uh, turbo SEPA, activate leg to waypoint. Does it work? Just messed up. Ah, uh, yeah, 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 yeah. Shouldn't touch that. Torpo Sipo activate. Nope. Whatever. We start descending about three minutes anyway. So at half past, probably. I was talking about something, but my memory is too short. Uh, now we're not using ferry tanks, so uh, we're just using the regular tanks. And it's gonna be two pilots, uh, so we're gonna overnight somewhere, probably in Greenland. Nathan Susanna asking is how is this how Honda Jet also sounds in real life inside the cockpit? Uh, so basically. It does sound like this, but it's way more quiet, to be honest. And especially if you're sitting in the, you know, active headset. And Honda is so nice that if they deliver you the airplane with... Uh, what did I switch off? Cabin oxygen on. Okay, that's my bad. So basically, they deliver you the airplane, which is worth almost six million dollars, and you can pay another extra thousand to get uh, the Bose headset so you can get it as a freebie if you lucky one Honda is really uh, different uh, in terms of uh, the developing uh, or actually delivering the airplane uh, so if you are a customer and you see the Honda first time in your life so you go to the Greensboro to the Honda plant and they're gonna present you with Honda with your new airplane on this rotating uh, platform and you can go close to the airplane but you cannot touch that so you cannot touch the airplane that you paid six million dollars for so I accidentally switched on the cabin oxygen and I have noticed before that the masks, masks are actually modeled except the toilet masks, so they have two masks in the toilet as well. And I don't have any enough here, but I will just uh, do my best. 
we're gonna descend 2600 and since it's the MFS 2020 you have to roll all the way down it takes sometimes ages to do so but what to do huh? And 600 as in the uh, platform altitude for the RLS. So we are still in the CSC, and you want to put the throttle back a little. If you move the throttles, the CSC will go off, uh, and you want to move the throttles back to about 75-80% before you start descending, uh, and you go approximately 2,200 initially per minute so if you don't put them back you can get into your overspeed condition really in a matter of seconds okay so uh, let me try to fix the VNAV take, fly plan, cancel VNAV. Yeah, I messed it up, so maybe if I activate this leg, it doesn't work for me. But we can go direct to Nera anyway. And this banana split will give you idea at which point you will get 2600 which is roughly correct for now and uh, since we have the straight wing as I told you before on Honda as you probably noticed that uh, you can descend really steeply in that one so uh, you see that we descend in 2000 feet per minute and we still uh, need a lot of power to maintain the speed and if I put the speed back to idle uh, you can actually stall the airplane when descending which is quite unusual uh, innovation so it has so much drag that it can go to <coughs> sorry it can go down to like 120 knots and get the stick shaker sometimes so if I get vertical speed of 1000 but we don't want to descend in idle we want to descend about 65 70 percent so we're not going so slow uh, the people who buy Honda they don't really care about the cost of fuel especially it's not really using a lot of fuel And, uh, you know, it's, uh, the Honda has uh, 600 flight hours uh, C-checks, so the price of the C-check is that, that is actually cheaper to fly faster uh, and burn some more fuel than fly slower and use these hours, so we don't want to go really slow. Uh, usually on descent we are basically maintaining 7.1, so we're gonna maintain speed around 7.1. Uh, the speed bag should be here, so even if you vertical speed, the speed bag should be here. And you will maintain about 7.1 and then go to 2.65. So we're not exceeding maximum 2.70, but... Uh, yeah. And just in my opinion, the engines are a bit too loud inside. So if you are in cruising speed, uh, cruising altitudes, and you move the engines, the wind noise is too big to hear that. So uh, 
you can hear the engines only when you are approach in approach so if you maintain it like 140 160 you can hear the engines but otherwise if you are on the, this kind of altitudes with this kind of speeds you won't hear the change of the engine sound uh, they're really quiet to be honest so chat for one last uh, moment yeah the cockpit using headset so if you get both uh, a20 headsets you don't hear nothing inside so I would suggest trying cockpit interaction system lock for easier knob controls. Okay. Uh, I just got used to this one. But uh, I guess you might be right. I just don't want to go to uh, the settings at this moment. So I don't mess up too much. Do Honda pilots use uh, headphones with noise cancellation? Yes. You can go on the speaker, you can just switch on the speaker and use the... Uh, actually, it's even here. You can use the hand mic, which is here, and speaker. Uh, sometimes we do that, but uh, usually on the ferry flies, otherwise the passenger will hear the ATC chatter, so that's not the best. Uh, good note on the speed bug, actually it's always showing, yes, it's actually always showing. Uh, whichever mode you are in, uh, you always have the speed bug. Uh, so, that's the point. Uh, JD is asking, so is it cheaper to descend like this than descend as late as possible on idle? Uh, so the Honda is actually giving you two procedures. The first procedure is to descend with three, three, three degree glide path we are, like we are doing now. So VNAV and we have three degree glide path. VNAV is gone for some reason. Uh, but the other thing is that we can actually overfly the top of descent and then descend on idle with the glide path angle about 5 degrees uh, which actually is cheaper to do so uh, but you have to keep in mind that uh, we are not only once in the airspace so uh, usually ATC would give you the descent early anyway so unless we fly to really remote uh, shit places uh, then we descend like this on three degree, three degree glide path. And if you're flying some airport that you don't expect anybody else, then you can plan for this high high speed descent, they call it. Uh, and actually, it's saving you some fuel. So, yeah, it's the same time, and then you save about 100 pounds of fuel ish. But, as I told you, it's like, you know, uh, you would have a uh, 737 that at this position would be at flight low 200 and you would be around 410 and then they have to get everybody in order, so they don't really want this kind of mess, so they give you early descent anyway. Okay, QNH 1014 in Dubrovnik, so 2994. I will set it up early, but I'm already descending to altitude. 2994, 2994, 2994. And it's set three times already. PFD settings, bearing one. Uh, that's netted from GPS, ADF, no data yet. 
I want to have nav1, nav2 or the PFD settings, com1, 1215 uh, wind option 3, that's my favorite one we have three different options here I personally like this one but it's not stated which one you should use Does this aircraft have uh, auto descent like a 737? It actually can has the Vena feature, which is not uh, usable on this one. But maybe one day it will be. So you don't know. We don't know. Sipal cancel, maybe Sipal to Nera. No, 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 I cannot. No, I cannot activate it for some reason. Yeah, I just messed up with all the FMC stuff here, so that's my bad. Uh, so basically, you're gonna use this banana split to calculate your. Descent rate. It's even showing you some weather here, but uh, I'm not sure about where is originating from. Uh, maybe the weather radar. I can turn it on. We'll see. And the real Honda Jet weather radar is totally garbage. So. I have to admit that uh, at least on our airplane, which is one of the older ones, uh, it's not the best one, so it's far from being good weather radar. Yeah, I go back to standby. So the thing that is saving our lives is the satellite uh, connection weather, so we basically downloading the weather from the internet. Uh, trash me, Russell. Hey, so probably some of you will asking about the Polish stream. So, the Polish stream will be taking about uh, four and a half hours, and uh, I'm leaving on Sunday, so I wouldn't really have time for that today. And this one is almost finished, so. Uh, the Polish stream is uh, set on 1st March of 2022, which is just a random date I set, and uh, I hope I can manage to do the live on my Polish channel, maybe tomorrow, but I can promise that one uh, yet, because I will be leaving for a couple of weeks and uh, I have a lot of stuff to do as always. So sorry for the confusion. Uh, can I go to here back? No, it's all on one. Okay. Nera. And we want to have 2,600 in here, so I just make it a bit uh, more shallow descent. Or we can get to 2,600 about here and see the city, and we can do the manual flight. Uh, I will show you some manual handling of this airplane.
yeah, it's all work in progress, as uh, Marwan is saying, uh, and the working title is still working on the uh, Garmin 3000. So I guess everything will come when the time comes for that. Awesome. So you see that I'm 2600 below and it's rising so I want to reduce the descent and 100 so reducing to 250 and fuel is balanced we have 1500 lights are normal air compressed descending set uh, passengers would be seated so lights are on that stand checks completed. Yeah, uh, just showing me different stuff, so I, I do my best. So the Vena feature is just uh, a bit messed up still. So and there is some traffic next to Dubrovnik and it's actually approaching Dubrovnik and I guess I should check the Vatsim map if there is anyone there so it's actually really a lot of traffic today on Vatsim so yeah there is somebody approaching from Berlin Eurowings 7 Romeo Kilo to Dubrovnik, but he is already on final approach. A320 Eric Jensen. Awesome. Miroslav, so uh, I'm going to Farnborough on Sunday. If you want to share a beer, I'm gonna have some time. Uh, so happy to join you. Okay, for some reason we went to active navigation VOR, but we don't know, we don't want it yet. We still want to be in magenta. And I want to reduce speed to 220. So we are basically on final. And I can go to chart, which I'm not on the chart yet, but I will sh I shoot up here somewhere here uh, once we pass peel up and now I can split that so I see the other part as well that's an awesome feature so uh, you can see the chart the flight plan and uh, those two panes those two panels you can set again uh, as uh, maps if you want so That's a lot of information can get. I mean, sometimes it's too much, but yeah. I have India Delta uniform, so I can go to localizer one. I can switch to approach mode, and the localizer is captured. So runway heading is one one four, and the glide slope is not here yet, but uh, the airport is just here, so we can already see that we are going too low and we have 20 miles to go so we should be at 6,000 feet we're way too low that's my bad there's the glide slope so what we can do we can do the touch and go maybe then disconnect the VAT sim and just do a short flight around the Dubrovnik Bay 
uh, to show the general handling if you want, if you have to, of course. So, according to IASA and ICAO, I should be 180 on the speed once I'm on final and then 160 once I get established. So, we are just passing, uh, starting to pass the bay. The Dubrovnik city is just in here. And that's the best thing about the MFS, that's uh, the visuals are awesome. Even if uh, my laptop is not really the best one, it's still looking good. So. Actually, I'm landing at Heathrow probably around uh, 6 p.m. So, uh, if you want to text me on the Captain Speaking Facebook page, uh, I'll be happy to answer. Okay, so the glide slope is alive, and for some reason I stopped descending. Yeah, just because of me. And they don't want you to stop the descent at all. If you clear to descend something, you should be descending all the time. Even if you are too low, you have to give them at least 350 feet per minute, so at least something. And 180. So this airplane, uh, we can go flaps take of approach at uh, 6 miles, gear down at 5 miles and full flaps at 4 miles. It should it should work perfect. Okay, so we are approaching the FAF, which is 2600, and yeah, uh, we can go full on this one. Glide slope is going to be captured just yet, so glide slope captured. Missed approach altitude 4000 feet set and we reduce speed to 180. And we're just passing the old town of Dubrovnik here at the glide of capture. And we have the altitude marker as you can hear. Okay, 6 miles, so flaps take approach. take approach speed going back to 160 and uh, I would have the speed back here as well which I have to change all the time by uh, changing the speed five miles gear down speed going back to 120 Speed below 160 for the landing flaps, and we still can wait like 0.4 mile. But yeah, we can go flaps landing. And speed gonna be around 115 for the final approach. And as you might notice, the Honda Jet is approaching with quite a big pitch up attitude. So that's how it is. So most of beast jets they will go with uh, nose level, but this one is going with nose almost 5 degrees. And we can go Yodam, the autopilot off. 
and yeah it's very touchy in terms of pitch but that's the real one is as well so if you touch it a little it's going a lot forward and backwards so that's nothing really unusual uh, if you fly a 737 in the simulator you can see that you need a little oh yeah that's my bad uh, you will need a lot of input but this one you just touch the throat uh, the oak and she's moving quite quickly and the roll control is a bit more stable than pitch on Honda Jet so as I told you before uh, the guys did really nice job in the physics so it's handling really really like a uh, real airplane it's not like uh, MFS shit Otherwise, it's quite stable in speed, and the real one is stable in speed as well. Uh, the biggest problem with uh, Honda is crosswind, so the crosswind is the hardest thing flying the Honda Jet. 111-ish, should work. And we are slightly high. Even Honda is saying you don't flare a Honda, so basically you fly to the runway. If you flare too much, it will just keep going and going over the runway. So you just go down to the runway, reduce the thrust, put it slightly up, and you see I put it too much and it's already floating. So touchdown, and we have to remember that we have only manual brakes. And I should extend the speed brake, but. Uh, don't want to mess up myself here. And there we go. Welcome to Dubrovnik. Uh, so, I would like to show you the more of the handling skills, but unfortunately I have to leave soon. So, we'll just taxi to the stand and I answer your chat questions if you have one. And the next stream I promise to do more detailed review about the handling but uh, the handling itself is really awesome so it's I think that's the best handler handling airplane in the MFS so far we can go to charts uh, it has this feature that if you land it will switch automatically to the uh, airport charts so this one and we just taxi somewhere in here so once we land it we put the flaps up and the gear unsafe yeah, my bad and we put the trim back to four units which is standard procedure so flaps trim and speed brake and anti-ice if was used thing about this airplane is that you don't have to worry about nothing like hydraulics, start switches, landing lights, etc. It's just a game, so it's like I told you PlayStation, so you just fly it. And uh, real life flying Honda is really enjoyable, so uh, it's a lot of fun, actually it's a lot of fun. You don't have to worry about too many things and you just fly it. Okay. The Dubrovnik airport looks a bit different, but I will just taxi here. And you probably know there's not so many trees in Croatia. So. Yeah, let's taxi in that one.
kind of on the line. So once we're on the line, the parking brake is set. And what we have to do, all we have to do, is just to cut off the engines. So I just pull it back. No, 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 not this direction. Come on. And that's the flight is completed. So you don't have any really long procedure to shut it down. Engines off. You will get a lot of warnings, of course, and then battery off. And that's done. I just want to open the doors, so off. And welcome to Dubrovnik. Thank you very much for staying with us. And the masks are my mistake. So we can leave and watch the airplane from outside for a minute. Uh, so, uh, I just take a look on the chat. Uh, how long you stay in uh, London? I'm gonna stay until Thursday, I think. Uh, Flunky lover, nice marker sound. It's actually a nice one. Hi, Dexter. Uh, okay, Atlantic Duo, of course. You should really try the Piper Arrow from Just Flight. Uh, maybe one day I will. Why not? We'll see. So. That's the Honda Jet from outside. Uh, the if you are 180 meter, you should be around here, ish. It's really small airplane, so it's really nicely made from outside as well. We haven't taken a look before. Uh, that's the ice light, as I told you before. That's the one light that is illuminating the leaning edge. So you see if there is any. Uh, ice on the leading edges, the landing taxi lights are just in here. And then if you continue, we have quite large winglet. Uh, you have some landing lights in, in here as well, and the recognition light, of the, the, they call, you, call them. Uh, static wicks, so ailerons with the static wicks, those three little things on the wing. If you're missing one, you are not good to go, so you have to make sure you have all of three of them. And the engine, so the engine is quite uh, interestingly mounted on the wing. Uh, so as you noticed before, so this kind of uh, engine mount will give you definitely more quiet cabin and a lot more of the baggage space in here compared to the same airplanes. So this one is really big one. It doesn't look like, but it's really big one. And uh, yeah, I can show you some pictures uh, if you want. Uh, the downside of this kind of engine is that uh, actually it has massive uh, side area so if you have any crosswind uh, you have like you take a look you have the winglet you have the fuselage you have this one and you have massive tail so it's very sensitive to crosswinds and the limit is 20 knots of crosswind and it's really hard to land when you have 20 knots of crosswind uh, because once you touch down if you have crosswind from the left, it will go a lot to the right. It will try to lift this wheel. So it's very bad at crosswinds. Uh, and this speed brake is just braking you. It's not uh, braking the lift. So the airplane after touchdown, it still wants to fly, uh, which is a bad sight, of course. And that's it, I guess. That's it. So. Anyway guys, so uh, thank you very much for coming today. Uh, if you did like the video, please subscribe to my channel. And uh, I would like to say big, big thank you to the developers of this airplane, especially to Marwan. Uh, you really folks did a very nice job on that. Uh, we raised some points, as you say, and uh, I would say 
there are no really big issues on that one. It's perfectly fine to fly already. Uh, of course, it still has some issues, but uh, it's a great quality add-on. Uh, and especially the flight model, it's really nicely done. Uh, so, thank you very much. Thank you for giving me that to test. And I see you next time, folks. So thanks and enjoy your upcoming weekend. Uh, fly safe. Bye-bye.